Hey guys, it's Nate and I'm standing in front of this house and it could go one of either way. It could just be like a cute old farmhouse, no big deal. Or this could be like a murderous asbestos filled deadly house. And I don't know, but it's going to get tested. Now, a little bit of backstory, unfortunately, and for ridiculous reasons, this house has to be demolished because we're building a new house on another part of the property and they won't let you have two. Whatever, that's how it is. What We've talked about it later. Because this house, whether there's asbestos or not, is at the end of its life. Let me give it a little eulogy. It was built in 1948 by two, I think they were cousins, but they could have been brothers. The neighbor told me this. And it was built as a spec house. They built this one and one next door, but before they finished them and sold them, some, there was like a health issue and they divided them up. And so this house lived its life as a, mostly as a rental, um, owned by lots of different owners for all these years. It's been a rental for us for the last couple years and it's been a, a, the home for a lot of people. In fact, one of the subcontractors who's gonna be doing some work lived in the house when he was a kid. So he had a soft spot for it, but unfortunately it's at the end of its life. Before it can come down, we have to find out if there's asbestos in it. Now, to be honest, I've, I've been around building my whole life and always hear about asbestos and I just am, a natural skeptic and have always kind of like rolled my eyes like, yeah, I don't know. It, there's a lot of dangerous things in the world. Well, I don't actually feel that way as much anymore. I called Joel from ART. He's coming to do this inspection. I was kind of asking him like, do I have to have an inspection? What's going on? And he informed me a little bit on the phone of things I did not know about asbestos. And it's really no joke. Now, I don't know how much asbestos might be in here. I'm sure there's some because it's so old and asbestos was used for centuries, for tons of stuff. It was like a miracle product. They used it for just all, all kinds of things. I'm sure Joel will tell us more about it when he's here, but that's what's happening. He's coming to, to give us the diagnosis. How bad is it, doc? I'm hoping if it's bad, then it's really only bad for me because it's gonna cost a lot of money to remove it. You guys are gonna enjoy the show either way. So uh, with no further ado, let's get Joel here and see, see what the situation is. Joel's company is called ART, and he was really great, and he graciously allowed me to run my camera while he was doing his job. A lot of times, if it's yeah, decent content, it will have almost a reflection coming back at it, like a, almost like a little tiny flakes of glitter. Oh, really? And you'll be able to you know, catch that with your eye, like, your, like the sheet flooring that's in the kitchen area. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Great. The first item of concern was in the attic, and it was a fabric wrap that went around the chimney. So you just break little chunks off or something that gets sent in. That's yeah. all they need to know. We uh, put it in a sample baggie, label it. You know, the DEQ is very, very adamant about location, uh, what it is, where it came from, exact coordinates of where it came from. Got it and it's got to be sealed in you know really thick you know little sample bags yes and then like we were talking on the phone yesterday you know the, the chain of custody yeah which is the federal document gets signed in triplicate holy cow yeah yeah because you're sent, you're potentially sending a hazardous material to the lab that's you know our labs up in seattle so oh. we're using fedex so you we have to sign this chain of custody letter saying that yes it's possibly could be contaminants huh. be careful with it wow <laughs> Is asbestos so toxic that it's like instant cancer if you like breathe it once? Or you know, I, the crappy thing with asbestos, it could take upwards of twenty to forty years before any symptoms can even come to the surface. And basically, it's your own body attacking itself. But is it the kind of thing that, in just one or two exposures, it can kind of the seeds planted and you're in trouble? Or it's like daily contact like when you're mining it. Obviously, that's worse. But yeah. when you breathe in the particulates. They, in a microscope, they're jagged, like uh, the old Inuit style up in Alaska, the Eskimos, the jagged spear points they use for yes. fishing. They're just everywhere, the I, barbs. Yes. They lodge in your lungs and it cannot be pulled out. Oh. So your own Avitali, your cleaning mechanism, um, in the class, it was, it was the weirdest thing that showed an actual live footage of the cleaning mechanism of, of the lungs. Oh no. And it's these little sacs that are all over your lungs. And as soon as a foreign particulate makes contact, it's like the garage door opens up and these little inchworms go beeline straight to the point of impact. They wrap themselves around it and pull it out. And you cough that up as phlegm. Yes. 
they can't pull it out. So they're like, we need reinforcements. Come on, troops. Come on, come oh. on. And they start wrapping around it and wrapping around it. And they start dying off oh. on top of it. Oh my and gosh. more and more keep coming and wrapping around it, so you end up losing that chunk of lung. Holy smokes. It's, so it's definitely no joke. <laughs> and and that's not just in the lungs you can get. Yeah. Um, you see in the old uh, uh, military guys in the Navy that were on the Navy battleships? Yeah. Big distended stomachs out to here, little legs, little arms. Yeah. That's a form of asbestosis. It lodges inside your intestines and causes the swelling. Oh, whoa. Yeah, so they ingested it. They didn't inhale it, but they ingested it. And once they're in there, they're they not coming out. out. Uh, the gym, tiger's eye. Yeah. That is a form of asbestos. I had that when I was a kid. It's like my favorite little rock. That's yeah, a form of asbestos. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and a lot of people have gotten cancer from it, from grinding it and making jewelry and not oh. knowing about it. I was telling you about. Yeah, the stuff on those on those wires. Yeah, let's see if I can get a chunk of that without uh, zapping myself. So Joel moved through the whole house like this, carefully inspecting anything that might be suspicious and looked like it could have asbestos in it, based on his experience. And if he found something, he would carefully take a small sample of it and put it in a Ziploc bag and label it and label on the house where it was taken from, and then photograph it and, and it, that's what all got sent up to the lab for the actual testing. So how did the, like, from Amazon tests work? It's so hard to see the asbestos fibers that the lab puts it through a special process where it's um, a phased light mi microscope that shoots three different light spectrums at it at the same time and it reacts to the light and then shines. Oh, it reflects. It reflects back at them so they can actually do a, a point count. Okay. Without that, you can't see it. Okay. So I don't know how those home tests would work considering that you, that the cheap, ancient, used microscope. Yeah, it's, you know, best to test it, but I think that will probably come back clear. Yeah, it doesn't look reflective at all. Exactly. Right, for sure. Well, it took a few days, but the results came back, and unsurprisingly, the house had a lot of asbestos. That wrap around the chimney was full of asbestos. The vinyl floor in the kitchen that Joel was suspicious of, uh, he correctly identified that, so that really is a good clue if you can see anything sparkly. Uh, that, that floor was full of asbestos, and the, the worst part was the drywall. And it could have just been the joint compound. I don't remember exactly, but you can't really separate that from the, sh the drywall itself. So it had to all come down. Fortunately, this house had those uh, paper ceiling tiles. That would have been a lot worse having to take that down. So I really wasn't complaining. And the abatement process is kind of a whole different animal. And so we'll talk about that in another video. But if you have asbestos, there's a whole separate set of protocols and procedures that you're supposed to follow to correctly remove it and dispose of it properly. So uh, you can look for that content uh, in a future date. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. I really did. And I can't thank Joel enough for uh, being such a great uh, sport while I filmed him doing his job and sharing this expertise with us and have a little more, I don't know, awareness. If you live in an older home, um, just because these things don't have a crazy smell or they don't hurt when you touch them or anything it doesn't mean they're not dangerous and especially if you are breathing these fibers regularly or digging into a big project uh, it's a small price to pay <laughs> for your health so get a test done then you know for sure then you can have confidence when you dig into your next home improvement project or in our case home demolition this house is coming down because we are building a new house on this site and you can look for more of that content soon. Thanks for watching. Keep up the good work.